And in this question, we have a rock being dropped from the edge of a cliff, or at least from a height. And we're interested in what the speed is when it's just about to strike the ground. So let's talk about it and draw a little diagram. Here's a rock, and um, we can say it's up at a height. And here's our hand dropping that rock. And it's going to fall down, and it's going to be right there just before it hits the ground. In other words, we're interested in just before it hits the ground, because once it hits the ground, it becomes a little less predictable, right? I mean, what kind of ground is it? Will it bounce? Does it embed itself or whatever? But just before it hits the ground, that's where it's still a projectile, and we can still make some really good predictions about it. So um, let's call this our before, and this is our after at the end of our situation. And in the before, we could say, well, it's up at a height, and we can call this the height. We'll use the ground as zero, and so we're 15 meters up from there, and so it definitely has potential energy. Now, as it drops, that potential energy gets less and less and less and less, until it's just about to hit the ground where the height is zero and so therefore there is no potential energy at the bottom. Let's think about kinetic energy. So at the very top we're told that we're dropping the rock and so when we drop it that means we're just letting it go. We're not throwing it or anything um, and therefore it has that um, kinetic energy is zero because the velocity at that point is zero. So we can say kinetic energy in the before situation is zero. Uh, the kinetic energy in the after situation, well, it's definitely got kinetic energy. It's just about to hit the ground. It's sped up all the way along there. All of that potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy as it speeds up and gets lower. And so, uh, yeah, in the end, in the after situation, we have lots of kinetic energy. So from an equation point of view, we can say E before equals E after. And um, before we look at it, and in the before we have potential energy, and in the after we have our kinetic energy. And so in this case, um, we're looking at it and we're saying, what speed? So we're looking for a velocity and velocity, speed, same thing, except for we don't really have to specify direction here. So let's start laying this out. Potential energy, mgh. Kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And again, which we run into sometimes, the masses can cancel out. And again, what that tells us is that uh, you know, as long as we can ignore air resistance, um, it could be a little rock, it could be a big rock, it could be a basketball, it could be a boulder, it could be whatever. Um, this prediction will hold true uh, for anything that isn't significantly impacted by the wind resistance. So um, perhaps not a beach ball, right? But uh, let's rearrange this for our velocity. So uh, to get rid of this one half, we can multiply both sides by two. And then to get the V by itself, let's square root both sides. And square root of 2GH. And we can plug some numbers into that. 2G. Uh, 9.8 and our h was our 15 and the whole square root of all that and we get if we plug that into the calculator 17 meters per second all right so that is the velocity of the rock just as it's about to hit the ground now uh, it will be a tiny bit under that because in real life there is a little bit of wind resistance but Given that it's a rock and it's only 15 meters, uh, the 17 will be pretty darn accurate. It will be just a tiny bit under that.